Hey, what's going on today, everybody? I'm gonna be diving into a video for a question I've been asked all too often, and that is, how do I animate my videos? Now, this is actually a very big question just because I can't answer it all in just a few sentences. It's actually, I mean, there's a lot that goes into animation. You know, it's not just the animation, it's the drawing, it's the sound effects, it's the backgrounds, it's, you know, all the voices. So, I mean, there is a lot to go into, but today I just kinda of wanna start off and I wanna show you how to do basic movements for characters. So that's what I want to show you guys today. And just a full disclosure, just to let you guys know, again, if you've seen me talk about this before, I am by no way a professional animator. Uh, this is all just self-taught, and this is just the way I choose to animate. And there are many other methods, many other forms and programs out there, you know, as far as maybe doing a, uh, animation frame by frame, you know, with certain drawing applications, and they all work great. Uh, for me, this is just how I've kind of learned to do it, and honestly, it works for me, and hopefully it works for you guys too. It's actually really interesting to see that certain people use tools for different reasons than what they were created for. For example, another animation channel out there you probably all know is Hizzy or How It Should Have Ended, and they draw their characters through using the program Photoshop. And Photoshop is by no means, or was really ever created to draw cartoon characters. But for them, that's what they were familiar with, that's what they were comfortable with, and honestly, they do an amazing job at it. So it's really quite interesting to see how people use certain tools towards their advantage. So that's why I just wanna let you guys know that again, this is just my method. I mean, maybe it won't work for you, maybe it will. Again, I know not all animators do it this way, but this is just how I do it, so hopefully you guys enjoy. So today, I'm not gonna get into drawing and all that other stuff, but again, I just wanna show you basic movements, but just a little, you know, heads up. Uh, what I use to draw all my stuff is I use a program called Affinity Designer. And I can tell you, I cannot recommend them enough. They're, the software itself is just amazing. It's just really easy uh, to work with, really nice flow. Can't recommend them enough. I'll, be, I'll leave links to all this stuff uh, below as well if you guys want to check out more details. What's also really nice though about them is that they're a one-time buy. They're not a, a monthly subscription, so it's really good budget-wise if you don't have a huge budget. And I mean, for what you can get just for a one-time buy, it's amazing. Uh, it was around 50 bucks. I bought it four years ago and I haven't had to pay a penny since. So uh, again, I'll leave a link in the description if you guys want to check it out. So once again, today I'm not going to go through the whole drawing process, but I will just give one little tip real quick. Uh, whenever you are drawing your character, you want to draw it in a way that it can be animated. So all these lines are individual lines, um, but I've grouped them together. Uh, that way I can move his head independently or his arms, um, or if I want to get more specific, his forearms and his hand, just like this. Um, so it's all, you know, these are all obviously individual lines, but I've grouped them together into pieces. That way I can easily move him without, you know, there being too much of a problem. And uh, as I do this, you guys will see that, I mean, any form of animation you do, whether it's my way or a different program or something like that, I mean, it's, it's going to be a little tedious. That's just kind of how it works, but it's always still fun. So I'm going to break this up into three uh, different categories for today. I'm just going to do a general background of characters and then backgrounds. I'm going to show you the framing as far as how I frame uh, each scene and then the timeline. So starting off today with characters and backgrounds. So as you can see, we have our stormtrooper right here. Uh, I have different uh, hands and different facial expressions here, which we will use. And then we have our background right here. And uh, this is already set to go. So uh, this is already set to be our background uh, once we put this all into uh, actually putting it into a video. So as you can see right here, uh, we have our checkered background and that means it's gonna be a transparent background. And so again, I do this through framing or through, I guess you could say pictures. Um, so we want him to be separate all by himself, uh, not with the background, and I'll explain that more as we go on. So for general movements, you want the character to move around four to five frames for a general smooth motion. Now, of course, if he was moving faster, or you know maybe he was really shocked and ran, it might be down to like two or three frames. But again, today we're gonna be looking at around about four or five frames. So right now we have him as a general, uh, this is just what he looks like. And if I click this button, we're gonna see only what we're going to see in the actual video. So we, obviously we got this rectangle here. This is just for work purposes so I can see the entire body. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to export him as of right now as a PNG and we're going to label as one 
That's just how I do it. And then what we're going to do, and again, this is where it kind of gets a little tedious, is we're going to just slightly move him a little bit, move his head up, going to move his arm out a little bit, and then this will be our next frame. So then we just export that. And then, so now that's exported. So now, basically what we do is we just keep doing this method. So we tilt him just a little bit more, tilt his head up, move his arm up just a little bit more, just like that. And basically you keep doing this until uh, he's in his final position. And I'm switching out his hand right here because I want his hand to be a little bit different. Just like that. And you know what, maybe uh, his facial expression will change here. So basically you just line up just like that, boom. And now obviously you can see he's in the back so I just need to move that up to the front. I'm gonna export that. And again, like I said, this is a little time consuming and you're probably thinking you have to do that for every single gesture or movement. Well, yeah, you kinda, it's kind of how it works. Um, but uh, I mean, if you wanna try it out, like I said, start off just by making, you know, a few second videos and it, you know, you start to develop a pattern and a rhythm and it, it gets a little easier as you go. So I got him in his final position that I want right now. So this is gonna be, like I said, we did this through a few different frames. Each time we moved him, we exported an image. And now we're gonna move on to the actual timeline. All right, so now I have my video software open and just to let you know what I use, or I do use uh, Adobe Premiere Pro uh, for some of the animation, um, but for right now, I'm gonna use DaVinci Resolve. This is another free program. I'll leave a link in the description. You guys can check it out. Really good. I mean, you can do a ton with this and uh, I, I just recommend it. So right now, as we can see right here in this left corner, I have all my frames or, or all my pictures of the stormtrooper moving. So, and I have a video, or sorry, I have an audio clip right here. I'm just gonna play it so you can hear it. Oh, hey guy, how's, uh, how's your first day going? So that's what we're gonna be using as far as what the stormtrooper is saying. So all you have to do when your frames are in here or your pictures, you just basically drag them and just put them right here. So now we can see, here's our stormtrooper at his base position right here, just kind of standing there. And I want him to start moving around the time, you know, the, the audio starts to go in. So now I take the other frames, and all I simply do is just move it in. I'll zoom in just a little bit more. And just so we got our frame, and see how I labeled them? One, two, three, four. And then I just move it in just like this. Put it right there. All, and then I hit the arrow just once, because again, we're doing this frame by frame. So all I do is click the arrow once, once again. So now our little uh, lines right here, move in the next frame, move them just like that. And just keep doing this until he's in his final position. So now we can see when we actually play the video, we'll see what it looks like. See, just one smooth motion, just whoop, like that. There he is gesturing. And I'll uh, play the audio with it this time. Oh, hey guy, how's uh, how's your first day going? Now, I know his facial expression doesn't really match the scene, but I'm just kind of showing how it changes from what it was to where it is now. So again, his original position was right here, and his last position is what it looks like right here. But in order to do that, we had to you know put it in through frames, which is all right here in the middle. Oh, hey guy, how's uh, how's your first day going? And that's what it looks like. I made a couple extra frames just to show uh, if we wanted maybe his uh, head to change position or look. So now we can see if it was going through and then maybe he looks off to the, you know, the left like, oh, what's over there? You know, whatever the scene might be. Again, I'm, I'm kind of doing this as you know, kind of vague, uh, but again, just to give you a general idea of what it looks like. So now, of course, after that, what we would do is move him to his next position back in Affinity Design. But let's say just for this one audio clip right here, uh, that was all he was going to be doing. We can simply just drag it towards the end. And what you have to do, since those images or those, uh, those frames are already created, you don't have to recreate them. So all you really have to do is just copy the frames and paste them, but in reverse order. So instead of going forward, he's going back to his original stance. So let's see what it looks like now. Oh, hey guy, how's, uh, how's your first day going? Then he moves back to his original spot, just like that. 
So with the work that we did with just five frames, we've actually, you know, been able to make it. So then, you know, it's, you know, he goes from here to here. And then we just copied and pasted in reverse order. And now he goes back to that position. So that's a basic form of movement. And there's one last thing to do. What we do is we want to move this up just one level, just like that. And now this is why I said earlier, we wanted to uh, him transparent and the character just all by himself. So I have my background here. And this is just like a uh, Death Star background right here. So now we can see he's in the background, you know, in the Death Star, just like that. Now, the reason I said we want to keep him separate with the transparent background is, let's say for whatever reason, you wanted to change the scene. You know, instead of being on the Death Star, you want him to be on Tatooine. You can simply just drag in a different background, change the size here, and now he's on Tatooine, just like that. So that's why when you're in Affinity and you're making your frames or your pictures, uh, you don't want him to be uh, with the background and exporting the image like that, because if halfway through the animation you realize you want to change the background, well now you can't do that because now he's with the background. So that's why you want those two uh, things different. You want the character and the backgrounds to have their own uh, layers um, when you're editing. So that's just a basic rundown right now as far as uh, general movements. I would like to show more of this as far as certain characters or maybe, you know, spaceships or maybe lightsabers or something like that. I want to be able to show you guys a little bit more details or a little bit more advanced things like that. But let me know what you guys think in the comments. You know, did you guys find this helpful? Did you find it interesting? Maybe something that you would like to see in a future video as far as giving tutorials on how to animate. Um, I know this again was a very basic rundown. I know it wasn't super detailed. Um, I hope this kind of gave you an idea of how it works. So again, thank you guys so much and I will see you guys next time.